You know, joining me now on India Today is former Railways Minister Dinesh Trivedi. Uh, Dinesh ji, your former party, the Trinamool Congress, asking for Mamta Ban, uh, asking for Ashwini Vaishnav to step down. Now, the government has put out a whole host of uh, advancements that have been made in trying to improve railway infrastructure. They're talking about Kavach, automatic block signaling, electronic interlocking. But none of that amounts to very much if at the end of the day almost 300 people die in the worst train tragedy anywhere in the world in more than a decade. Can you hear me? Uh, Rahul, your voice is not clear at all. Okay, give me a moment. I will just try and fix that connection with the former Railways Minister and go back to him in just a moment. I want to go across to Professor G. Raghuram. He's a former director at the IM Bangalore, uh, expert on railways uh, infrastructure. Now, Professor Raghuram, the fact is that, you know, track renewal and maintenance, the government says 5,200 kilometers of complete track renewal are happening every year. This is much more than what's happened in the past. They're also citing data about track upgradation where 65% of the broad gauge track has been completed. But none of this, frankly, uh, ha carries much value at a time when 300 people have died in arguably the worst train tragedy uh, in a very long time. Well, I... Uh Definitely agree on the sentiment, Rahul, with uh, 300 or as some numbers are, it could possibly be more depending on the injuries and the uh, treatment or, you know, the post-accident uh, uh, concerns. So, definitely, you know, maintenance, uh, trap upgradation, rolling stock issues and signaling issues uh, all need attention. I think a significant bit is happening and there is always this you know small probability that something goes wrong um, I, I hope it doesn't everything should be fail safe uh, so definitely attention more attention is required on that but I would also emphasize that post accident emphasis I think the Indian Railways need to pay a lot more on that and what I mean by that is, how do we minimize the consequential damage? For example, the interior designs of the coaches. You know, when a railway coach is thrown around, the bodies would get thrown around. And if you really see how an AC3 tear or a second class and, you know, some of the ways in which they are held up, uh, I think a lot of attention and a lot of experimentation design issues have to be dealt with to minimize consequential impact. Then rescue. In fact, I wonder why the Indian Railways do not have helicopter fleets. You know, while they have the, they still follow the railway medical equipment, um, you know, rolling stock, which visit accident sites. But could they not have fleet of helicopters positioned at different points in the country where, say, within the hour, you know, the golden hour, as they often say, that they can quickly come and, of course, one would, hopefully one would find a spot close by to any such uh, accident uh, spot and take people away and, you know, add to the rescue. I think this is an extremely important step that the railways need to take. Uh, of course, there is discussion on Kavach. You know, I think a good thing is happening in terms of Kavach, but I'm not sure this kind of an accident is really, you know, can be saved by Kavach. See, in Kavach, there are two active elements. You know, the electronics need to speak to one another. But if you have a passive infringement on a track there is a problem and i really don't know when you have a double track section you know large part of the uh, railway system is a double track section and something were to happen to a train on one track uh, on the other track when a train is you know almost immediately coming I, uh, I, I think there is little much that can be done. Okay. Of course. Uh, 